I would like to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, everyone and uh, offer my gratitude and appreciation for all of you for being here. Uh, I can see devotees of Rinpoche, the very old devotees of Rinpoche's friends and uh, disciples, practitioners, and of course the uh, venerables. And I would like to take this opportunity to basically remind ourselves of uh, what this uh, day means. It is known to us that this day is a day to, from a universal point of view, a day to remember and celebrate also uh, the life of a great being. Now from a spiritual point of view, this day is a day where we remind ourselves of basically three most important uh, deeds or activities of a great being, particularly that of a great and a realized Bodhisattva. That of, of course, His Holiness Kunzik Shama Rinpoche, his life. So the three things being that, just like the Buddha himself, the very birth, which is very important, unlike our rebirth, the rebirth of a Bodhisattva is supposed to be a conscious rebirth, a rebirth where the intention is to benefit sentient beings and it is through that intent that they take the rebirth. And so we must utilize this day and time to remember that. And of course, as we all do universally, we try to remember uh, the life of the great being, that being basically the activity, the legacy, the contribution that has been made to this world. Just like many, many great beings uh, that we know throughout the history, in present day, the uh, life of uh, the His Holiness Kunzi Shamaran Bache has been again a tremendous uh, in source of inspiration for all of us as devotees, followers, simply because of being able to protect, being able to preserve uh, the very lineage that we know. Lineage being that of not just any lineage, of course, a lineage of compassion and wisdom, if you will. The teachings of Lord Buddha, the teachings that has survived, that has developed, that is developing as we speak for over 2,500 plus years. And such teaching has been brought to the various regions of the world. As we speak, of course, the very teaching has now reached globally and it's benefiting countless of beings with the message of compassion and wisdom. Countless of beings are realizing the benefit of such timeless uh, teaching, such timeless practice, a practice that doesn't require uh, any effort at all. Simply by generating compassion, generating wisdom to others, others, others than ourselves, brings, first of all, great peace to ourselves, and that being so, it also benefits those who are around us. And this effect, of course, is timeless. It has been seen by the Buddha and by the Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas meaning those who are about to become or those who follow the way to become Buddhas, beings. So they have seen it, they have experienced it, they have realized it. And 
the very being that we are talking today, that of the Kunzi Shamarambaje, is such. And the legacy that he has left is, as we see, the practitioners that is left, that is here, uh, committing their time and energy into further development and further understanding of what we can achieve, how much we can contribute to others, all the good things that we know, that we talk about. And because he has preserved this lineage, we are able to share in it, we are able to practice it, we are able to live with it. Um, live with it meaning that somehow integrate in our daily life, integrate in our everyday hectic and busy life and find some meaning out of this. And this is the teaching that he has preserved which in this very materialistic and difficult uh, time and uh, world, uh, it's extremely difficult uh, to preserve mainly due to what Buddha says, due to our emotions. Of course, the factor karma comes into play. It is a very strong force, a very powerful force that drives us to various limits. But nevertheless, by trying to understand um, the the challenges of these karmas and uh, afflictive emotions that we face every day. We will come to know, we'll come to, uh, we actually understand how beneficial this practice of compassion and wisdom is. That it is the actual antidote to overcome these challenges. And so, we have to remember what uh, he has left for us, the very timeless and precious Buddha Dharma, and the understanding that we have for one another. So this is what we have to remember, and we have to make use of this opportunity as uh, previously uh, Venerable Jimur Rinpoche has mentioned, the precious human body. Uh, it becomes this precious body or this body becomes in some ways precious because the opportunity that uh, we have. At the same time it's fragile because of the afflictive emotions and the karmas that, that is there, evident. So I would like to ask uh, all of you to uh, take this opportunity uh, to reflect on the meaning of uh, the uh, compassion and wisdom, how uh, is the effect of this, uh, how, benef uh, how beneficial it is um, by embracing these qualities. And by doing so, then we will come to know uh, what is the benefit of actually having presence of uh, great beings, great bodhisattvas in our lives. Because without them, then these teachings has simply no way to survive, has simply no way to actually flourish. It is due to these uh, Buddhasattva's activities and their lives and their dedication that is being preserved, these teachings are being preserved and shared and made available for all of us. If we experience any kind of peace, a sense of peace, be it physically, mentally, in any way, uh, whatever the amount, whatever the magnitude, whatever we uh, experience, any form of peace is all due to none other than the practice of compassion and wisdom. So therefore, uh, this is something very important for all of us to remember. Now thirdly, as I said, uh, just like the Buddha, the, uh, the third important or most obvious deed or the activity is that of the body nirvana, 
or in simple terms, passing away. So, therefore, his final teaching being and the uh, teaching of impermanence, how fragile, how uh, impermanent uh, our life is. So, even though we may perceive this in a very mundane way, in a very worldly way, that um, just such uh, event or such uh, occurrence is just a part of uh, daily life and nothing more. But in fact, this is something more than that. Uh, it's actually, it should be received, it should be understood, it should be taken as a part of teaching, uh, a part of actually direct teaching, yes. When such things occur, immediately uh, it makes you uh, contemplate and wonder about one's own well-being, one's own state. That if such a great being is able to pass away, then how about myself? How about others? Um, and so therefore, it immediately brings that, uh, not to say curiosity, but somehow that moment of reflection. So therefore, although, of course, it is um, difficult to digest, of course, such facts every time it occurs. For example, it could occur to someone very close to you, someone who's very influential to you, to you. and when that happens, of course, it's, um, it's very daunting, it's very emotional, it's very heavy. But nonetheless, there's something to learn from that, yes? In this case, meaning the passing of Rinpoche is simply a teaching, a way to remind ourselves of just how fragile it is, just how fragile our life is. So therefore, I would also like to ask you to equally take in, absorb uh, the experiences you've had and not uh, let go of that experience um, and um, somehow needs to be absorbed by our daily tasks and daily involvements, you know. So, because there is great wisdom in that by uh, remembering, um, how to say, the impermanence of every aspect of life, yes, every change of uh, one's own uh, way of thinking, one's own way of being, one's way of, uh, own way of behaving and so on. So by, by focusing on these um, aspects, it gives us greater wisdom. The wisdom is not something that is gained from somewhere out there, but it is gained from within, from such experiences that you, gain, that you actually feel it from within. So by focusing on it over and over again, which is, then, that is, which is called a practice, of course, and for that, of course, you have to give yourself time, be a bit more consistent in a way, meaning that uh, um, you give time to, um, uh, for this experience, for this understanding, for this wisdom to grow. So therefore, by doing so, then it becomes something timeless. It becomes something limitless in a way, timeless meaning that it doesn't get exhausted. Whereas in a materialistic aspect, uh, after some time, it has its own limit, it has its own end. So, whereas in this case, uh, if you're focusing on these uh, qualities that we have, it's timeless. So, therefore, it's I think very crucial and very important for all of us to utilize these moments, these precious moments that uh, has been given to us. And of course, today uh, being, very, uh, being a very special occasion because it marks the anniversary of one year of the Parinirvana of His Holiness Kunzi Shama And uh, for this very occasion, we are fortunate enough to have the uh, bone relics, which is very special. For most of us, maybe um, it is uh, we. Uh, it's difficult for us to comprehend the significance of the bone relics. The bone relics are one of the many signs or proofs of actually a being is a great being, not just a being, but a great being. 
great being meaning that also not someone who's born as great being but from the beginning of course just like the Buddha himself uh, began from a very ordinary state of uh, let's say life or circumstances just like ourselves but over the course of time due to their sheer uh, quality and dedication they have uh, excelled and they have um, transcended in their qualities of compassion and wisdom and due to that then uh, not only of course their, their true essence which is the consciousness actually devel develops from an emotional state into an enlightened state but not only that as a result even the physical state itself is also uh, equally affected in a positive way of course meaning that then uh, such, you know, during such cases when uh, the, you know, the consciousness then departs from this world, let's say, yes, then the very remaining of the physical um, body uh, also leaves marks, signs uh, of actually um, the, the very conscious uh, or, or the, the very consciousness actually, actually has uh, compassion, has actually wisdom as a sign often they are uh, remains normally when we cremate a body of course we all know that uh, of course at the end the fire consumes everything yes and nothing can remain there it's a fact but because of their understanding and abilities actually remains are left and it is said that and when the remains are left it means that the disciples or the followers or the practitioners have a certain karmic connection with the being who has passed away, a positive one, yes? And due to that, as a source of receiving blessing, as a source of actually re uh, re uh, receiving um, inspiration, then remains are left. Sometimes uh, remains such as uh, the um, eye faculties or the tongue faculties or or let's say you know the the physical uh, remains of those are left uh, simply due to the uh, activity of that very being having meditated or having uh, recited uh, let's say uh, pure speech having practiced spirits and pure speech if a heart is remaining it means that it has practiced a bodhicitta if a tongue is uh, left behind it means uh, the being has practiced uh, pure speech. If the eyeballs are left, it means that uh, the, uh, the individual has practiced on visualization of pure view. So equally, various uh, the remainings that are left uh, with the relics, of course, which comes in various forms, they also represent actually a source of blessing. And so therefore, I think it is um, very correct to say that we are all very fortunate and uh, we, we can consider ourselves very, uh, um, I don't like to use the, word, the term lucky, but definitely fortunate uh, to have the remains uh, actually remaining for us to actually gain blessing from it. And so therefore, uh, a part of the relics has been now installed here in this very temple and so therefore everyone should also take blessing and offer prayers yes unlike the way we celebrate you know in a universal way of uh, someone who has passed away in a spiritual uh, aspect particularly that of passing of a great being actually it's not just a way to remember the person but more than that, to call for their blessing, to call for their inspiration, to call for their wisdom, for their understanding. And by doing so, there is again something else, again, something more than material. There is something again timeless that we can absorb again. And this goes a long way. So therefore, I'm glad that many of us are here. I know that many of us, are, there are many other uh, of us uh, who are not able to come here due to the very fact that has, uh, the tragic fact that has occurred in the region of Nepal and so on and so uh, therefore uh, of course uh, 
um, they are not able to be here today. But I appreciate and I rejoice in the fact that those of us who are here, we are able to utilize this moment to call for their blessing. And most importantly, of course, now, one fact that we have to know about uh, the Rinpoche is, of course, is a reincarnated being. Yes, and that is, again, a, a very important factor. Uh, a tradition that has begun uh, back in Tibet, a tradition uh, within Buddhism, of course, within the Tibetan Buddhism, a tradition where, in order to benefit the sentient beings, in order to continue the lineage that, uh, that has been brought from this land, this nation, your nation here in India, the teachings that have been brought all the way back over the Himalayas, back to the Tibet, uh, in order to preserve it, then a tradition of tradition or a, basically almost like a culture, let's say, of actually the very being reincarnating over and over again in order to continue the lineage, in order to benefit the ancient beings. Such tradition has begun. And therefore, the very remains of this uh, very Rinpoche, as we all know, the Kunzi Shama Rinpoche, is that of the 14th reincarnation. And so therefore, we shall also utilize this moment uh, to also pray from the bottom of our hearts for a swift return of the 15th reincarnation. Yes. So I would like to ask all of you uh, to uh, join me in this prayer, which will also last starting from tomorrow for um, more than a week uh, with the practice of what is known as Chakra Sambara. Um, and it is a, a uh, practice and a tradition, tradition that we have kept for centuries. And so for, uh, of course, you, all of you are most welcome to join. Uh, but at the same time, of course, today is equally a very special day. So therefore, I would like you to pray and to receive the blessings from the relic. And lastly, I would like to offer my thanks and gratitude for all those who have come. Uh, I know it's a very, um, you know, a busy day, busy schedule, uh, you know, hectic um, engagements and so on. But nevertheless, you took the time to come here. So we have venerables and monks and nuns who have come here, devotees, of course, uh, uh, um, you know, older acquaintances of Rinpoche, as well as also we have today, I think, uh, the, um, uh, from the Bhutan Embassy as well as from the Nepal Embassy, we have also their representatives and I very much appreciate also for their uh, coming as well. And not only that, we have students coming from all over the world and I really appreciate because uh, I know how hard it is uh, for all of you to you know, take the time to come here, especially when it's this hot, when it's uh, uh, this long. So thank you so much. And uh, to all of you, may we all benefit sentient beings and may we all generate compassion and wisdom. Thank you and Namo Buddhaya.